everybody, David Hevener here. Welcome to Hollywood. I have a special guest with me, Zev Perot. And from the name, you're probably going, oh, he's one of these Jews in Hollywood, right, that owns movie companies. This guy is very special. He doesn't own a movie company, but he's actually a real messenger from God. Zev, how are you? Shalom, David. Thank you for having me on the program. Shalom. Thank you. Tell me about your ministry. If someone came up to you on the street, such as I, and said, tell me what you're doing for God. It's called an elevator pitch, a one-liner. What are you doing for God? Why are you here? I'm his servant. I'm just here to tell all people that Yeshua Jesus is the Messiah. Okay. Is that all people meaning the Jews and the Gentiles or specifically to the Jews? Well, the Bible says that Jesus came to the Jews and to the Gentiles. Okay. There it you says go. in the Bible, uh, Paul spoke about in Romans 1.16, to the Jew first and then to the Greek and then to the Gentile. But that doesn't mean to the Jew better. It, it just means that God has order. It, it also means that the Jews received the Bible. They received the Torah. They received the Word of God first, and therefore they'll be judged first. That's all it means. Okay. You mentioned Torah, and I want to bring that up. You know, a lot of people, because I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, we th when we think Torah, we think the law. Like, oh, the, and, and then we've been told the law is dead which I don't want to get into that right now. It's a whole nother show. But Torah actually means instruction. That's right. That's right. When I heard you say that, I'm going, all of a sudden lights went off. Folks, the Torah is not the law. It's not something that God once said and now it's dead. And by the way, that doesn't even exist anyway. The Torah is instructions. And it's instructions that never dies, right? Same today. Same yesterday, same tomorrow. Absolutely, David. You know, if you uh, ask a Jew that doesn't believe in Jesus and Yeshua, what is the Torah? He'll tell you it's the five books of Moses. And it is. But is it only the five books of Moses? Absolutely not. It's the whole Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Because if we go to the Brit HaChadashah, the New Testament, what do we see over there? That everything's quoted from the Old Testament. So It's quoted from Deuteronomy. It's quoted from Leviticus. It's quoted from, from Isaiah. That's the whole Torah. Jesus himself testifies that the Torah is the whole Word of God when he goes into the synagogue and he says, Today you've seen Scripture fulfilled before your very eyes. What was he reading from? He was reading from the book of Isaiah. So you're telling me the Torah is actually from the old beginning of the Old Testament to Revelation, the end of the New Testament. Absolutely. Because when Jesus was on the face of the earth as a man, man and God, he was the New Testament. I mean, there was no such thing as a New Testament at that time, but now we reason it. See, this is the other thing, Zev, is we, I tell you, we've been so brainwashed in this Christian, you know, community. The Torah, folks, is God's instruction all the way from Genesis to Revelation. Absolutely. When Jesus, Yeshua, was in ministry, when Paul was in ministry, was there a New Testament? No. There wasn't a New Testament. No. So what were they quoting from? They were quoting from the Old Testament because the Old Testament and the New Testament are one book, one word, one Torah, one God, even the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. Right. It was the message. It was the instruction. Absolutely. Okay. So let's move on to another topic. Prophecy. Would you consider yourself a prophet? I consider myself somebody who speaks the word of God. Uh, the prophets are in the Bible. Okay. God doesn't have so-called prophets to add to the Word of God outside of the Word of God, but He does have people proclaiming the Word of God. Uh, okay. So when it says in the, in the book of Amos that God uses prophets to confirm His Word, it's speaking about the prophets in the Bible. It's not speaking about new prophets outside of the Bible. And I think there's a misunderstanding on that. Right, so we have to be clear about that. This, when I asked you if you were a prophet, you wanted to make sure people didn't think you were a, a new kind of Moses coming along. And I'm and, just and a servant undo. of God. We're all small people with a big God. That's it. Right, but out of you and out of me and out of all of us, God speaks. The Holy Spirit, right? Absolutely. So that's, that's a prophecy of sorts. Now, it's a gift of prophecy, uh, but we're not prophets. Okay, good. There's a big difference. Y yeah, right, exactly. So, let me ask you, the Christian community, and when I say the church, I don't mean necessarily the true body of Christ. I mean the buildings, the the organization, the system. How many people percentage-wise would you say in that whole group actually are awake? Actually 
read, understand, and adhere to what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24, what goes on in Revelation. In other words, how many are ready for the days in which we are? I think that a lot are ready, but I also think that a lot are not ready. I think that the message of we're under grace is a dangerous message. Do I think that we're under grace? Absolutely. You and I are sitting here because of grace. We've been saved because of grace. But having said that, grace doesn't replace sanctification. That's Preparation for being the victorious bride of Jesus. We have to become the victorious bride of Yeshua HaMashiach. What does that mean? It means to prepare us up for His second coming. How do you prepare yourself? By the Word of God, by the true Word of God in context. So I think that there's an awakening all over the world right now. Okay. But I also think that there's a lot of so-called churches, whether they're buildings or not buildings, that are they need to wake up because they've been told that everything is going to be fine. And everything will be fine in eternity, but we're going to have to go through a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, a lot of hardship before Jesus comes back. I don't set any dates. I don't know when Yeshua is coming back. But I do know there has never been a generation closer than this generation to the second coming of Yeshua. And to answer your question, I think that the church in, in whole has been fooled. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25, it talks about that he will seek to change times. It, some translation says law and seasons. He will seek to change the Torah and God's biblical calendar and deceive the very elect if he can. I was going to bring that up. Last question. In order to be saved, to go to heaven, do you have to have a consciousness, a knowledge, a seeking after of Jesus coming back in these end times? In other words, if you're not aware of it, if you're not paying attention to it, is that the category that's the goats? Or are you the sheep? Well, I think only Yeshua knows the heart, but I can tell you, uh, David, that we have to prepare. And what does that mean to prepare? It means to prepare to be the bride. The book of uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5, says, Who is this coming out of the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Who is that? That's the remnant. That's the bride. And she's coming out of the wilderness. The wilderness is a place of preparation. How do you come out of that wilderness? By being prepared. So to answer your question, the sheep and the goats, only God knows the heart. We're not going to judge anybody. <laughs> You're good at dancing around that, my friend. I know I put you on the spot with that. But of course, well, only God. Only God yeah. knows the oh, heart. You oh, know, yeah. If somebody absolutely. says he believes in Yeshua, Jesus. Yeah. If he really believes and he really confesses mm -hmm. that he's Lord and yeah. he's really following, you know, the word it, of God. Then he's, then he's it, saved and he's it, under the category it, of the sheep. Right. He just may not be enlightened, you know. But scripture does say that we need not to be asleep. We need to be awake. We need to constantly look for Jesus coming. And preacher, I ask you this question. There's nothing wrong with talking about how, how your congregation can uh, heal marriages and, uh, and, 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 and prosper financially and do all these great things that, uh, that are great. They're great. But however, how many preachers out there are preaching what we're talking about? The coming of Jesus, Matthew 24 and Revelation. Shouldn't your congregation know about that? There's a lot of preachers that are doing it, but there's a lot of preachers that are scared to do it. They're trying to be what you call politically correct and trying to preach what the people want to hear in order to have numbers uh, in their congregation. Okay. But it's not about numbers, it's about the Spirit. Because okay. the Bible says that God is looking for those to worship Him in spirit and, and in truth. And in truth. Okay, so I was going to end this, but now that you brought something up, I've got to continue. One more question. When you said preachers are trying to be politically correct, how do you apply political correctness to Matthew 24, to Revelation, to the coming back of Christ. You can't. You can't do that. You can't. You can't serve two masters. But unfortunately, oh. we hear in many pulpits around the world that people are trying to be man pleasers. Oh, okay, but but how is being a man pleaser not wanting to talk about Jesus coming back in Matthew 24, Revelation? Because if you talk about Matthew 24 and you talk about the Book of Revelation, you're going to have to be talking about preparation. And I don't think a lot of people want to be prepared. I think they want to be told that they're prepared already and right. everything's going to be okay. Right. Yeah, I agree. Could it be that Matthew 24 and Revelation, reading that, looks like a dark spot in Christianity? It's not, but because family goes against family, many are called, few are chosen. In other words, the rubber hits the road. 
<laughs> right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think that a lot of pe a lot of people take scripture out of context, and uh, you need to realize that going through tri uh, trials and tribulations is a good thing because right. you get purified like gold and silver. Amen. Amen. That's why, David. So I think that we should not be afraid of the truth. Because the truth can only do one thing, and that is set you free. Amen. Thank you. Give, give everyone your website and your information, how they get in contact with you. Our website is messiahofisraelministries.org. We'd love to hear from you. Sign up to get our newsletter. And uh, if you'd love to support missions uh, in Israel and around the world, then please do. There's an option uh, to give over there online. And also, we, uh, we go to Jerusalem every 10 or 12 days and pray on the Mount of Olives. Wow. Each one of our prayer requests we print out, and we don't leave the Mount of Olives until we pray one by one on each one. So send in your prayer requests. We'd love to hear from you. And pray for us, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalms 122, verse 6. Amen. Amen. Uh, folks, support them, please. A great cause. Um, also, go to lastevangelist.com. You, you know, I've talked about this series for a long time. God said, do not go to investors. Go to my people. They will support it. And that's what I'm doing. And many have stepped up to the plate. Lastevangelist.com. Sign the newsletter. Uh, Zeb Farad, thank you so much for being here, and God bless you. Thank you, David, for what you're doing for the kingdom. And let's continue to work together that harvest and bring it and go home. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. God bless. American Survival Wholesale is proud to sponsor this ministry and their efforts to shed light on the issues that face our nation. As a veteran and Christian-known and operated company, we support the freedom to express these Christian principles. We all understand the importance of being prepared. After witnessing the devastation of Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and the wildfires that affected so many, please support this ministry by clicking on the link below and check out the amazing alt media package for our listeners. Plus, if you use the promo code PNN radio, that's PNN radio, you will receive free shipping, a savings of up to $200. Just click on the link below, but please do it today. Your support means so much to this channel. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.